Hello, I'm Tyler Marie Battenstor, and I'm going to be explaining and applying concept from of grammatology by Jacques Derrida. So I'm going to be explaining this concept in three parts, and the first is to preface the idea, which is essential to being able to understand what the main concept that Derrida is trying to explain in of grammatology is. The second is to actually explain the concept itself, and the third is to apply it to a modern uh, issue. <laughs> okay, so to preface, I have to explain the concept about speech as a representation of language. So the most popular way of communication between people is speech. And what is, speech is essentially is just a sound uh, representation or a verbal representation of an object or of an idea. Uh, and that the object is independent of speech. Just because you call something a car, if you called a car a bus, that wouldn't change the actual object. Words, language, is just used so that we can kind of all share an understanding of what the other person is talking about. But it is not actually the thing. Language is made up. Language is, is just our way of categorizing things. And so I think that is the first kind of concept is that you know the object is the truth and that language is just a representation of the truth of the, the object. And one of the main issues is that not everybody understands words the same way. It was said once in class that there's the dictionary definition, there's your definition, and there's my definition of the word. Because we all associate words with our experiences with not only those words, but their antonyms and their synonyms. So, so our own bias... Uh, our own, our own understandings of the words, they they pollute the actual object. They pollute our own understandings of the object, which is why um, spoken word is seen as less pure, less of the truth than the actual physical object or, or the the idea. Now, what Derrida does is he takes it a step further, and he says, if language if, if spoken word is one step away from the truth of uh, the essence of the object, then written word must be even farther from that because written word is just the phonetic representation of spoken word. So written word is a representation of representation. And because of that, it is more polluted um, and has even more room for misinterpretation than even spoken word. What is also more confusing about written word compared to spoken word is that with spoken word we can read people's faces, we can read people's actions and their intonations when they speak, which helps us interpret what the other person is trying to say using words. So we're not just relying on the words alone when we're trying to communicate, we're, we're trying to speak to somebody else. We're also relying on the way that they put it across. But when you take that away, there's even more room for misinterpretation. And even though we try to compensate by using you know, punctuation, italics, and whatnot to, to symbolize, to represent those things, to give the other person a better idea of what we mean, it is still very complicated. We don't do a really good job of representing uh, these things. In our society, writing is seen as more valid than spoken word, which is ironic because if we go by what Derrida is saying, it is the thing that is farther from the truth. So for example, if we look at legal documents, you know, legal documents things that are written have more weight than something that somebody else says. And I know that's partially because uh, people, you know, we have a general distrust of what people say and whether people are telling the truth. But it's just funny that we have more, we count more on the written word than the spoken word 
even though it's it's more polluted. And also, particularly my generation is is a generation that writes everything. And it's because of technology. We tweet and we Facebook and we text message. I mean, not very many people call anymore. And, you know, it's because we find it easier, I guess. But it's also the thing that allows the most errors. And you see it with celebrities in the media all the time, you know, tweeting things that they didn't mean to be offensive, but people took it as offensive because their understanding of certain words was different. And 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 I, I can give an example of something that happened just yesterday, just a really simple misunderstanding. Um, my, my music was on really loud in my and I was in my room, and my dad texted me, come here, just two words. And in those, just by seeing those two words, I was sent into an absolute panic attack because I, I thought he meant it um, to be kind of a, to be intimidating, like a, come here right now, miss, I'm very upset with you. So that's how I took it. So in that one moment, my mind absolutely jump to all these these things like I start thinking about you know what did I do and if this is what he's going to be calling me out for then how do I refute that and what if this blows up into a big fight where what do I do where do I go and it was just from these two words just two words and a period and so this is one of those times where the the intonation and and the body language was just not there and so I interpreted it completely wrong because when I came downstairs kind of upset and like what what did I do he just he looked at me like I was crazy and he just like I I just wanted to know what you wanted for dinner and I you weren't you couldn't hear me so it just kind of shows just two simple words two, and and a, and a dot at the end of a sentence that that creates so many connections, so many, it's, it's just such a big misinterpretation, and there is absolutely no need for it. And I know I just, I picked the, the simplest little, little example, but I really wanted to illustrate how misinterpretation because of language, and because of our own bias of language, and because of, of written language, um, how it, it happens every day and how it really can have a negative impact because if we don't understand each other then we can't communicate and if we can't communicate we can't share ideas and and I think that's really important so with all this technology that's supposed to bring us together that's supposed to connect people because it is mostly using written words or it it completely defeats the point. It's actually pulling people apart because people are just not reading them the way that they were meant. Hopefully I was able to uh, kind of break it down and explain it in layman's terms. It was a pretty difficult text to understand. I mostly focused on chapter 2 which was about 36 pages. Um, because that was the particular section. I know there's a lot more and a lot of different theorizing that Derrida does, but I just, I liked this concept because it could be applied to something very minor that happens to everybody every day, um, particularly because of technology. And personally, I do wage a little bit of a war on technology, which is why I kind of hate this video thing. Sorry, sir. I just, oh man, this is like the 50th time I've had to take this video and I've tried to take it all in one shot and all in parts and I don't like it and now I have to post it on YouTube and oh man. So, but at least it is spoken word and therefore possibly my point is getting across better? I don't know. I, uh, I guess Derrida would say that that's what's happening. So hopefully you understood me and uh, yeah. Hopefully I, I did all right on this.